Where would I buy in the city of Albury, New South Wales, if I had to? Now this is not saying to buy here or not. This is by user demand from you, our audience, requesting us to take a deep dive on the Albury market and identify which suburbs, which streets, which property types we will potentially target and why. So let's start this deep dive now. I do like to give a high level introduction to the, the, you know, the validity of the area overall, and that really does complete the end to end deep dive, but I wanna keep this to around five minutes so we can get into the, the nuts and bolts of those street areas. Overall, Albury, top 80% of all local government areas across the country. Um, you know, Albury is on the northern side of the border and it is, uh, you know, its sister city is Wodonga on the, w, on the, sorry, the Victorian side of the border or the river actually. Um, you know, overall they do form a larger city. They, they were separated through COVID, but generally they are considered Albury Wodonga. In this particular example, we are speaking of, as requested, the city of Albury, which is the New South Wales side of the equation. They generally do move in the same direction at the same time. We've generally bought in both locations at the same time. Overall, only average employment diversity but number one on the list is healthcare and social services. That's a positive. There have been uh, precedences though in the last couple of years for money to be spent outside of Albury in preference to spending in Albury. Places like Wagga, places like Bendigo, uh, that's where the state governments are focusing the attention on healthcare social assistance. Overall, okay. Uh, employment growth is low, commute time, not really relevant when we're talking about things at a regional level. Um, lifestyle, it is an inland centre. Overall, extremely well serviced for the size of population that we have. Now, new projects, it is a larger catchment area. So it, this, you know, when we look at new projects, we are factoring in things that are within a few hundred kilometers of Albury, you know, a lot of agriculture, mining, um, you know, larger industrial type investment. And you have to remember that that might impact a wider, broader area, you know, not directly impacting Albury with what's happening. So we have here the Snowy Mountains Hydro Scheme over $5 billion. The impact it would have on Albury is arguable. You know, you start coming down to some industrial, some professional, within the, uh, you know, a couple of hundred kilometers of Albury itself. Um, overall, we see very low impact for these new projects on the Albury area. Overall, population growth for a regional centre is actually pretty good and it's trending upwards, which is a positive sign. And it did quite well through COVID. We actually have at a regional level an undersupply of new homes being constructed and a projected 4.1% population growth for the next three years. This is a really positive sign. Do be careful. I won't go into this page now. I do want to skip to the suburbs, but come over to picky, P-I-C-K-I dot com .au and check out the new construction because it is in certain pockets, certain areas we need to stay away from. Certain areas have very low opportunity for new housing supply. So some of the areas that I would focus my attention coming into Albury, we've got North Albury number one on the list, rates ranked best to worst. We've got Lavington and we've got Albury and East Albury. These are, these are the areas that I'm seeing the most potential. Let's come into North Albury and let's take a deeper dive there as number one on our list. $430,000 average entry price. You've also got the same entry price in Lamington, just further north. Uh, north Albury, we're seeing 5.5% as an average yield. You do have to remember when you're coming into these suburbs that the, the different types of dwellings, uh, it changes throughout the suburb. Okay, what I mean by that is you've got some very cheap pockets or cheaper pockets and you've got some more established, more upper socio areas, especially in Lavington where you might have a $300,000 three bedroom and a $1 million plus three bedroom up on the, you know, on the, the larger areas out on the periphery. So we do have to be really understanding of the street level dynamics in these areas. Um, coming down in North Albury in particular, occupancy type, you've got some pockets here with only 26% 
owner occupiers. We want to try and find those street pockets that have higher than average yield, uh, higher than average rent, above two in three owner occupiers. So I'm seeing, you know, very quickly this area to the northwest, these pockets of four street pockets here that are sticking out to me, and even potentially this pocket down here in the southwest. And the yield I want to see is above average. So look, this street pocket here, I'll zoom in, is probably my standout street pocket in the whole suburb around Barter Street, uh, what's this, Kokoda Street, Tarakine, uh, Av, Boona Street. I just want to check public housing levels, 0% public housing, but now this gives goes to show we do have two classes of properties in North Albury. This area over here, 44% public housing. Come in and check these suburbs, guys. This is where I would focus my attention. If I had to buy in Albury, look to North Albury, look for the gentrifying pockets with good strong owner occupier appeal with good heart, you know, above average yields. And the same applies to Lavington, just further north, even potentially pockets in East Albury. That'll be my three picks north to south.